Welcome back YouTube and molders out there. This is Dave Lucas with Injection Molding Skills and More. Today's video is a PowerPoint presentation um, over troubleshooting with the three M's. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna actually go over parts sticking in the mold, okay? How to actually fix that using the three M's. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna go to the mold first, then material, then the machine side, okay? You're going to use these techniques that can actually help you solve the issue of parts sticking in the mold. Okay, so I'm going to go through the PowerPoint presentation, show you guys a little bit of everything that's going on. Um, I hope you guys enjoy the video. I hope it's informative and you guys learn something from it because that's what I'm doing. I'm, I'm just trying to make it to where you guys have something to learn from. I'm learning from you guys as well. The comments in the section. The comment section really gives me some feedback on how you guys feel about the the videos the content and everything if it's helping you guys or not or if it's a bunch of bull okay so enjoy the video i'll get with you guys at the very end of the video welcome back youtube and molders out there this is dave lucas with injection molding skills and more so this video this powerpoint presentation is going to go over part stuck in the mold okay how to fix that issue using the three m's um, mold material and machine techniques on how to get it out okay so let's start troubleshooting parts sticking in mold okay sticking in the mold molds molded parts may stick in the mold and cannot be ejected properly this uh, typically occurs if the shrinkage level is too low or too high to allow easy ejection or the shape and surface finish of the molded article creates a sticking effect in the mold itself okay so sticking in the mold can be due to these things so overpacking injection pressure too high underpacking excessive shrinkage insufficient cooling highly polished core surface or draw polish insufficient knockout action surface ingurlation <laughs> is in the mold or whatever uh whatever that is um insufficient core or wall tapers okay so the taper of it and then the last undercuts okay so you use undercuts to help pull the part off of the a side or the non-moving side is what they'd call it okay so think about that guys okay then the first thing we're going to look at we're going to look at the mold side so these are some things you can do to the mold now these pictures i got off the internet to show you parts that are stuck inside the mold so on the mold side decrease mold temperature increase cavity half mold temperature so maybe one side of the mold will be hot most of the time your a or the non-moving side you have it warmer so the parts will shrink to the other side so you have the moving side or the b half colder to have that part shrink to that side check mold for undercuts and and burrs to make sure there's nothing in the mold uh, use mold release in areas to find the issue so what you can do is you could actually spray the area you think you're having an issue with and then see if it actually pulls out with the mold release just spray like one little area and try it don't spray the whole mold check for balance melt flow on multiple cavities cavity tools okay the material side so the material there's hardly anything you can do with the material. It's always the lubricant in the material, uh, whatever they put in the material that'll cause it to stick into the mold. Okay. So think about that whenever you're molding. What are you molding? Polypropylene don't have hardly anything in it. Uh, polyethylene, stuff like that. Um, high density polyethylene, low density polyethylene, all that really don't have a lot of stuff in it. They might put like um, a lubricant in it to actually help it with releasing like they might use like uh i can't even remember the damn name of it, but they use some stuff that they put in there like talc they might put talc or something like that in it to help it release okay 
So this is the things you could do after you've done checked all that. These are some of the things you can do on the machine side. So decrease injection pressure, decrease injection rate, adjust profile slower. So injecting it slower, change your profile. Decrease pack and hold time, decrease pack and hold pressure, increase cooling, the, the phase time. So leave it in the mold a little longer so it shrinks to the other side. Increase transfer position, decrease barrel temperature, decrease ejection speed, profile the ejectors. So have your ejectors start to come out real slow, then go fast to get it off there because maybe what's happening is you're pushing the pins through the part. Maybe you never know. Decrease clamp breakaway speed. So whenever you first break away on the opening, barely have it crack open and then open, then open fast. Um, check the nozzle orifice is smaller than the sprue orifice, okay? Because if you're not and it's bigger than the sprue bush in itself, you're going to shear around that area. Then you're going to end up overpacking the tool. Use air eject if possible. So some tools, like if you run like a TPE or a, a rubber or anything like that, sometimes it's hard to get it off of the tool. You might have poppets or something like that that blow air into it to pop it off there. So think about that. Sometimes you might have to use stuff like that to get it off of the tool, okay? So again, these are the things you can do on the machine side. The last thing I have here is I put a couple molds in here that shows you how parts will stick. So if you look at these, these are round parts. What happens is sometimes these will want to stick easily because there's no undercuts on the outside wall of this or on the inside wall of this to help hold it. Sometimes you got to put them in there if you can get away with it to help pull it to the other side to hold it on there. So think about that whenever you're running a part. If it does not affect the surface area of the finish, put some undercuts in it to actually pull it to the other side. So think about that whenever you're molding. Last but least, thank you guys. Please like, share, and subscribe. Smash that like button. See it? Yeah. Smash that. Horns down. Oh. <laughs> but yeah, please like, share, and subscribe. Smash. Do whatever you guys got to do to support the channel. I appreciate it so much. Until next time, peace. Okay, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed that video. I hope it was informative. You learned something from it. Um, I'm watching Shark Week, actually. Well, I don't think it starts till the 23rd, but hey, I'm watching Shark Week. Um, but I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Um, please like, share, and subscribe to the video. I will not be posting a lot of videos except for the shorts in the next couple of days. I'm flying out tomorrow night, me and my girlfriend, to Texas until Sunday. And then we'll be back, and then I'll get back into the quizzes. Hopefully, I will have a job when I come back. No matter where, I don't know, North Carolina, Texas, South Carolina, Florida, I have no clue yet. But I appreciate all the support to the channel. Smash that like button down there. It really helps the channel, and I appreciate all the support. Until Monday of next week is when I'll have new videos up. Peace.